Welcome to the 7th byte in the EMB video series. So far, the previous videos in the series cover about EMB contact mode, where the card is actually dipped inside the terminal. In this video and the subsequent videos, I'm going to talk about EMB contactless. In this specific video, I'm going to cover general concepts of contactless functionality, not specifically about EMB. Contactless is everywhere, straight from our ID cards used in the office environment, transit cards used, and also our contactless payment cards. In this video, we will look at what are the different components in the contactless technologies, and we will also look at the various protocols involved in contactless and the differences. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. RFID is a technology that uses radio waves to identify objects. This technology has importantly two components. One is a reader and a writer object and second one is an RFID tag. So first look, let's look at what does an RFID tag mean. So this RFID tag are the items that are to be identified or tracked. For example, in case of an ID card, it contains of the identity information. In case of a payment devices, it consists of the payment instrument related information. This RFID tag consists of a chip and also an antenna where the chip stores the information and the antenna transmits that particular information. So these RFID tag is the object that is to be tracked. The second component is the RFID reader. RFID reader is the brain in the RFID technology. These are devices that transmit radio waves and then receive the information from the tag and then do further processing. It consists of two main components. One is the RFID reader, which receives the information, which parses the information that is received from the RFID tag. Antenna is kind of transmitter that transmits the radio waves receives the information and then passes it to the RFID reader. When it comes to radio frequency, there are three important bands in the radio frequency. The first one is a low frequency band. The second one is a high frequency band. And the third one is an ultra high frequency band. The low frequency operates at between 125 to 134 kilohertz. And the signal range is kind of short. It is only up to 10 centimeters but it can penetrate through very solid objects. The next frequency is about 13.56 megahertz and the range for this frequency is about one meter. The third frequency is between 856 megahertz and 960 megahertz and the range is up to 15 meters. Generally, all the radio frequency related examples that we look at, like contactless cards, ID cards, everything operate on the high frequency on 13.56 megahertz. The use cases for each of this frequency band are different. The ultra high frequency is generally used in case of toll gates where the tags are attached to our vehicles. The low frequency is typically used when we need lossless data transmission. The high frequency is used in predominant of the use cases where the vicinity is required from 30 centimeters to one meter as such. The RFID tags that we spoke of, that is the objects to be identified or tracked, there are two major classifications in them. One is a passive RFID tag and second one is an active RFID tag. Passive RFID tags do not have their own power source. Only when that passive RFID tag comes in vicinity of a reader, the RFID tag powers up and transmits the information stored. Whereas an active RFID tag has its own power source and it would be able to broadcast information to the reader. All the general examples like our ID cards are generally passive RFID tags. Contactless cards are passive RFID tags, but in the recent past, there are examples or of, of active RFID tags as well being used for contactless payment cards. The first protocols that were implemented for contactless cards are ISO 13443 and ISO 15693. Both operate on the same fundamental principles, but each of them was implemented for different 
applications. They both were intended for different applications. ISO 13443 was developed for contactless payments and high security access controls etc. Whereas ISO 15693 was primarily used for vicinity based applications like access control, asset tracking etc. ISO 13443 is categorized into four subparts. First one talks about the physical characteristics, second one talks about the power and signal interface, the third one talks about anti-collision provisions etc. And the fourth one which is very much important for the application developers is the transmission and messaging protocols and the commands that are to be used. Now let's look at what is NFC. This is a word that we have been listening to a lot in the recent past. NFC is called near field communication. NFC also works on the same fundamental principles of RFID that is high frequency radio waves of 13.56 megahertz. But why call it NFC? Why can't we call it RFID itself? Let's look at that briefly. So when the industry moved on from the standard contactless cards and the advent of mobile phones that came into picture, a new entity called as an NFC forum was formed to standardize this RFID slash NFC protocol. This was more to bring the flexibility of implementing RFID into more portable devices like mobile phones, uh, tags, etc. The idea was to create a common protocol that could go into any portable devices when we moved on from standard ID cards and tags. So for NFC, a new protocol called as ISO 18092, also referred to as NFC IP-1 version 1, NFC IP refers to near field communication interface and protocol. This particular ISO protocol was developed on the same lines as ISO 13443, but it replaced the main command set that was used in ISO 13443 with a newer command set. It enhanced the modes of operation what a contactless cards were being provided. So when contactless cards were used, generally it was used only for reading and writing data into the contactless card or it was used as a contactless card. It is also called as card emulation, right? So in addition to these two, NFC bought a new operation mode where the tag and the reader or two NFC devices can talk to each other and do data exchange. So NFC protocol brought a new facet of operation called as peer-to-peer -peer data transfer mode. So NFC protocol got what ISO 13443 mode implemented to get a payment device from a card to a mobile device. So thanks to this NFC protocol, we are all using our phones as contactless cards for performing transactions. So just to emphasize, NFC protocol brings three modes of operation where in the first mode we can read and write data into an NFC tag. In the second mode the device can act like a contactless card for doing transactions and the third mode two NFC devices can exchange data between them. I'm not going to spend more time on this particular slide but I want to introduce that this NFC protocol actually classifies the RFID tags, the NFC tags into five different types. Type 1, Type 2, Type 3 and Type 4 and Type 5. Each of these are intended for different purposes. Like let's say Type 5 are used for vicinity based cards like what ISO 15693 implemented. Whereas Type 4 is generally like what is used for a payment cards. Each of these are classified based on the memory, the data rates, the capabilities that each of these support. We all know that EMV Co implements the foundation for implementing EMV technology in payments. So NFC Forum and EMV Co collaborate with each other to align the NFC standards to get into payments technology. We keep referring the word NDEF. NDEF is nothing but NFC data exchange format. Another important point is there is a smart card system in Japan called as Felica which is very important and even NFC forum implements one of the type 3 tag for Felica based smart cards. 
NFC IP2 is in continuation to NFC IP1 talks more about which operation mode to select. So this is an extension to NFC IP1. So this concludes this video. Hope you learned something new about contactless technology. In subsequent videos, I'll talk more about how it works in a payments functionality. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe.